the last time we used this acetate to make wall texture? Well, this time we're going to use it to make ground texture. So come along with me and let's see how we're able to make ground texture with this. If you remember the last time, we had to wet our board first. We made sure it was low sheen, not high gloss. Then we laid in the paint and we started from our lights to our darkest areas. Once we got in our lights to the darkest areas, then we started playing with the paint. In this case, we're going to play with the acetate to give us our ground texture. So I put some paint onto the acetate and I drag it in the direction that I wanted my ground to flow. And I drag some of the dark areas into the light areas. And that's what's creating that natural ground texture. And it makes it ground texture that's more uh, not so contrived, but it has a loose and natural feel to it. And now I'm putting in sort of like tire treads or directional treads. Let's say if a wagon or a road that was constantly moved upon in a given direction it leaves those little ruts in the road. So we're creating that flavor of ruts in the road. And I've done it with the brush. And I'm getting in a few more dark areas with my brush. And then I'm going to do some cross shadows as if there are shadows crossing the road from the side of the road. So as I put those in, I'm going to go back and do my directional tire treads again because I've lost some of that a little bit. But I have the basic overall texture. My board is dry, so I'm going to airbrush back into it to wet it again. And then wetting the surface, it allows me to drag my acetate over it because you need it to be wet. Put some more paint back in. And then I'm going to drag it in that same direction of my ruts in the road. It's going to be a little darker to define those more. So that's what you see happening and I'm, I'm keeping it wet with utilizing my airbrush to do that. And this gives you a kind of a quick quicker method of getting all of those textures into the ground without necessarily having to overpaint them. I'm going to put, just to break up my ground a little bit, I'm putting a little bit of grassy flavor to it here. I'm not going to necessarily focus on the grass because we're going to do a technique on, on grass a little bit later on. So my focus at this point is to put highlights as if the sun is coming from the left hand side and hitting some of the ruts in the road to give a little more dimensionality to those ruts. So I'm picking out spots to help accent that the most. And once I've done that, I'm using a tooth brush to give myself tiny little pebbles. And then I'm painting in some larger pebbles, little rocks, that's in the road as well. And then I will give them some shadows so it feels like they're attached to the road. And this will basically complete the look of a finished road. And mainly, again, we're focusing on getting that natural texturing to the road by using a piece of acetate. And as we cross dissolve to the finished piece, that's basically what it looks like. Because I noticed on the long shot, it was hard to see some of the detailed pebbles and things that I had used the toothbrush to give me. So hopefully you can see it a little bit better here. So that's our method for doing ground texture.
It's amazing what we can do with the little piece of acid they have. Hopefully it's something you can add to your technique. Or give it a try and see whether you can add it to your painting technique. If you find it interesting, please subscribe, check out my site. We'll see you next time.